All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the uh, derivatives of the sine and cosine functions. Um, so here, d dx of sine of x equals cosine x, and d dx of cosine x equals negative sine of x. So in other words, the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Uh, that's actually also pretty interesting, I think so. But um, So we're going to prove both of these here, and they're actually pretty similar proofs. So um, you know, if you just want to check out one of them, we'll do this one first. I know the second one's really similar. Uh, but we'll just do them both here, uh, just for completeness, I guess. All right, anyway, uh, let's start with this one, and we'll say uh, let f of x equal sine of x. All right, and then we're just going to show uh, directly from the definition that uh, the derivative is cosine of x. So f primed of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. Okay, so now, um, well this equals the limit as h goes to 0. Uh, here, if f of x is sine of x, then f of x plus h is sine of x plus h. All right, and then f of x is just sine of x. So then we have this. All right, so now um, now we got to uh, revert to one of our trig identities here. So remember uh, this one. Let's use a different color real quick. Uh, sine of a plus b. Okay, uh, one of the trig identities says that this equals sine a cosine b uh, plus sine b cosine a. All right. We're actually another way of saying this. Uh, let's say cosine a times sine b. Let's say it like that. This doesn't really matter, but um, it'll just make things slightly simpler. All right. So sine of a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. That's one of our trig identities. Uh, let's apply that here. So instead of a and b, we have x and h. But you know, same thing applies. Um, just you know, instead of a and b, you use x and h. So then what we're going to have is uh, this equals the limits as h goes to 0 of sine x times cosine h and then plus cosine x times sine of h. Right? So that's uh, this uh, right here being expanded with the trig identity uh, up here. So we still have the minus sine of x there and then that's all divided by h. Okay, so now um, we're going to combine some stuff and simplify a little bit. So uh, let's get rid of this, and we'll come back up here. So this is going to equal uh, the limit as h goes to 0 of what? Um, so we have sine of x cosine h plus cosine x sine of h minus sine of x. Right, so this first term right here and this last term, they both have sine of x in them. So let's combine them into one uh, like this. So let's say, so we'll do a couple steps in one here. Let's say sine of x times cosine of h and then minus sine of x. And then let's put that over h. And now um, this second term, this term in the middle here, let's split that up into a different fraction. So this is just going to be plus cos x sine h over h. So we'll just split it up like this, plus... Uh, cosine x sine h over h. All right, and uh, we're still taking the limit of everything, so we got to have these uh, brackets or parentheses here. All right, so now let's erase that. So uh, this equals the limit as h goes to zero of um, here. We have a limit of a sum, right? So the limit of this plus that is going to be the limit of this plus the limit of that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, limits of sine of x. Now, before that, real quick, what do we have here? Sine x cosine h minus sine x. So let's also factor out a sine x. So what do we have left? Cosine h and then minus 1. All right? All divided by h. And then plus limit as h goes to 0 of uh, all the same stuff here. Cosine x times sine h uh, over h. All right, so just to recap this last step real quick, um, we have a limit of this plus that, so that's the same thing as a limit of this uh, plus a limit of that, 
And then uh, this here, we just factored out sine of x from the top. So that's why we have sine of x times the quantity cosine uh, h minus 1. All right, so that's what we have so far. Now, um, the next step we do next is say uh, equals, so let's give ourselves a little more room here. Uh, this equals, now notice here, this is a limit as h goes to 0, and sine of x is just sine of x, right? Sine of x by itself, there's no h's in that, right? So let's go ahead and just pull that out of the limit. Uh, remember, x is our variable, but as far as the limit is concerned, sine of x is just a constant, because the limit depends on h, and the limit doesn't care what x does, right? So if it just uh, has x in it, we just pull it out and uh, treat it like a constant. Because again, as far as the limit is concerned, this is just a constant, because it's just x and no h. So this equals sine of x times the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine of h minus 1 uh, over h. And then plus, so we'll do the same thing over here actually, uh, limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x times sine h over h. Again, this is just cosine of x, the limit only depends on h, so the limit doesn't care what x does. So uh, as far as the limit is concerned, x is just a constant. So cosine of x is also just a constant. So we'll just pull it out of the limit. So that's cosine x times limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h. All right. So do these look familiar at all? Um, well, they show just a little bit. So here, uh, limit as h goes to 0 of sine of h over h, that's uh, one of our special trig limits, right? So yeah, here it's expressed in terms of x, but it doesn't matter, right? Remember, this is just a dummy variable. Uh, x, 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 or h, 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 doesn't matter what we call it. Um, but the point is, uh, this limit here, this one right here, uh, this equals 1, right? That's our special trig limit that equals 1. So this uh, equals 1. Um, how about this other one here? Limit as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1, all divided by h. Well, that's... Uh, looks like this one, right, the second one, limit as x goes to 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over x. Um, but notice, instead of 1 minus cosine h, it's cosine h minus 1, but that's actually okay. Um, really, all that does is multiply the limit by negative 1, but the limit is 0. So if you multiply 0 by negative 1, uh, you just get 0 still. So this, um, we've actually seen it in this form before also, but uh, this is just 0. Okay? So then what we actually have is sine of x times 0, all right? So we'll just write it like that, just to be clear. These aren't really necessary, but uh, just for clarity, we'll write it like that. Plus cosine x times 1, all right? So this is zeroed out. Cosine x times 1 is just cosine x, and we're left with that. So uh, that's a proof that the derivative of sine of x is cosine x, okay? So let's go ahead and do the same thing um, with the derivative of cosine. So it's actually pretty much going to be the same procedure. We're just going to uh, you know, use the definition, uh, expand it with a trig identity, simplify a little bit, and then we're actually just going to end up using these same limits. Um, it's only going to be slightly different with the algebra because the trig identity will be different, and uh, we're going to have an extra minus sign in there, which is where that comes from. But let's just go ahead and do that just for completeness. But if you want to skip to the next video, uh, you're not really going to miss anything here. So go ahead and do that if you like. But for those of you who are staying, uh, f of x equals cosine x. All right. So then f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So then this is the limit as h goes to 0 of, if f of x is cosine x, then f of x plus h is cosine of the quantity x plus h. All right? And then minus uh, cosine x all over h. All right, so now we use another trig identity. Uh, so this trig identity uh, is going to be a little bit different from the one we used for the other derivative. Uh, but this is going to be cosine of a plus b equals uh, cos a times cos b minus sine a sine b. All right, so cosine of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. 
And again, here we have x and h, and not a and b. But again, it doesn't matter what you call these. Okay? Just the point is it's cosine of something plus something else. So if we use this formula and uh, apply it here, then what we're going to end up with is uh, equals the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine x times cosine h minus sine x times sine h. Uh, and then we still have, so this just came from expanding this using the identity, and then we still have this minus cosine x here. And then that's all divided by h still. All right, so now, um, just like we did before, let's go ahead and come up. So we have this for now, let's go ahead and come up here uh, and simplify a little bit. So this is going to equal the limit as h goes to 0 of what? Um, here, cosine x, cosine h, minus sine x, sine h, minus cosine x. So the first term and the third term uh, here, they have, both have cosine x. So let's go ahead and combine them into 1. So we'll do uh, cosine x times cosine h, and then minus cosine x. And then also, just like before, let's split it up into two fractions now. So we'll have this over h. And then here, what we're going to have now is a minus sine x, sine h, all over h. So our second term is going to be minus this stuff here. So now we're going to have a minus uh, sine x, sine h, all over h. All right. And again, we're taking the limit of all of this, so we've got to put parentheses or brackets here, uh, either one. Okay, so now uh, this equals the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, what happens next. So... Um, well, here we have a limit of this minus this, so that's going to be a limit of this minus a limit of this, right? So in other words, uh, limit of a difference is the difference of the limits. Uh, and here, let's also factor out cosine x times cosine h minus cosine x. Let's pull out that common factor of cos x. So we have cosine x times the quantity cosine h minus 1, all right, all over h. And then this is going to be uh, kind of running out of room here, minus the limit as h goes to 0 of this stuff in here. Uh, sine x times sine h all over h. Okay, so remember if you have a limit of something minus something else, you can split it up into a difference of two limits like that. Uh, and here we just factored out the cosine x from the top. Okay, so then our next step, uh, pretty much just like before, let's make some room here. Uh, our next step now is going to be equals, uh, so again, this is a limit as h goes to 0, so as far as this limit is concerned, x is just a constant. This limit doesn't care about x, so anything that has just an x, we can pull out. So here's cosine x, let's pull it out. So we have cosine x times the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1 all over h, and then minus, now we have sine of x, so again, limit as h goes to 0, uh, so anything that has an x in it is just a constant as far as this limit is concerned, because it's a limit as h goes to 0, so it doesn't care about x. So sine of x uh, times the limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. All right. So uh, here we see our special uh, trig limits again. Okay. So this is actually going to be uh, cosine x times, this one was 0, right? So remember our special trig limits here. Uh, this first one was 0, and the second one is 1. So times 0, and then minus sine of x uh, times 1. Okay, So this, uh, when we simplify, we just get negative sine of x. Uh, and that's a proof that the derivative of cosine is negative sine.